Um, hello everyone, welcome to the CSE 365 practice CTF info session. Um, give me a moment so I can screen record the um, screen share this. Cool. Um, so, assuming everyone can see the slides. Uh, okay. Cool. Okay. Um, so yeah, welcome to today's CTF info session. Hopefully today I will be able to debunk everything that you may be wondering about what CTF is and what your midterm will be. Um, it seems like a big scary thing, but I can assure you that it will be perfectly fine. Okay, so with that, we can get started. So, so I heard you want to be a hacker, man, huh? Well, uh, if you want to understand what CTF is, it stands for capture the flag. Basically, at its core, it's kind of like, um, I guess, security competition. Um, and you want to get like a piece of a string that is the flag. Um, you could be either doing programming. You could be um, breaking a web page or stealing data, reversing something. Um, but all that you're trying to do is get a flag. So we want flags, right? But how do we get a flag? Um, you're going to be doing a variety of different steps, uh, challenges, processes, and whatnot, and figuring out what the security challenge will be handed to you and what, um, uh, I guess, like, and um, methods and whatever uh, the author intends for you to do. So if you want, uh, we want to solve challenges, right? And this could be either working our way through a Linux environment, like um, having everyone access to like a shell, um, using tools to reverse a binary, watching incoming traffic, where it's more so like attack and defense CTFs. We'll get into these a little bit later. Or you could be writing scripts to inject a payload for a service to get a flag that way. Challenges may be difficult, but each thing will be a learning experience. If you get overwhelmed easily about this, just try to think, what is this challenge trying to teach me? And that should help you a lot more. And also, guessing will do you literally no good. And this is why. Flags will have a certain format for each competition. Um, for example, we have the Alice CTF, HXP, and the Dragon uh, CTF, but each thing has its own unique format and everything. So it's going to be really, really hard to brute force uh, a solution. So you basically have to do it like the, the legit way. <laughs> um, yeah. So you might be wondering what's in it for me? Well, Outside of the class, um, and in, uh, there's also uh, more competitions for CTFs. Um, one of the bigger ones that probably be easy to mention is the DARPA uh, Cyber Grand Challenge, in which some of the ASU SEPCOM professors have uh, were a part of for this. Um, and they placed third on uh, in this competition and won like a boatload of money. Um, yeah, so they're part of the team called Shellfish and you can see here, uh, Mechafish is uh, their thing that they created. And yeah, so uh, for like a little bit more context, uh, a lot of the contestants here were part of the, oops, uh, were a part of the um, like big uh, defense companies and shellfish just kind of came in like an underdog, like a, just, you know, like a group of security researchers from a university with like not much. And somehow uh, they pulled through and this place third. Clout, Clout was also involved. Um, if, I don't know how many of you guys have heard of DEF CON, but it is a really big um, cyber event. Uh, that's hosted in Las Vegas almost annually. I think there's around like 27, 28 or something. 
uh, amount of DEF CONs already. Um, if you do enough CTFs, you can qualify for the DEF CON CTF, which is basically like the um, Olympics of CTFs. It's like the grand final and um, the CTFs uh, itself is like written by uh, the order of the overflow. And some of your professors here at ASU, like Adam and Tiffany are part of the order of the overflow. It's basically like a mysterious entity that writes the challenges. Um, you can also see here that we also have Adam and Jan and Fish being a part of Shellfish. Uh, this is uh, the team that I mentioned earlier. It's basically kind of like uh, a joint team between um, the UC Santa Barbara's hacking team and ASU's hacking team. We'll get into a little bit uh, later, um, but they've been around for quite some time and are pretty well known. Also here you see uh, the Tiffany being part of the Plaid Parliament of Poning. Um, she comes from uh, Carnegie Mellon and uh, the, that team usually places first in almost a lot of competitions and CTFs. <clears throat> and your grade is also part of this. Um, your midterm is 10% of a grade and your final so it will also be 20% of a grade. Um, don't worry too much about the midterm since it's 10%, but you will be, um, I guess, preparing enough for this. You will have like, like, you'll be able to figure out what's going on and what you need to do. And um, yeah, the details will, for this will be ironed out shortly and We'll go into like the logistics of it a little bit later. So CTFs generally have two modes. This would be either Jeopardy and or attacking a defense. So it, well, in this class, we won't be doing attack and defense, but we will be doing Jeopardy. Attack and defense is kind of more like um, a super intense thing, uh, usually you know, with like a team, you're given like a list of vulnerable services and you will either have to patch the vulnerabilities, which is like the defense, or you can be writing exploits in attacking services, not just your own, but also other teams in the competition, which is the attack part. This will be a run based and a score bot will be generating flags that will be valid. And this will also depend on how long the CTF will be. So for example, with the DEF CON CTF, the final, is basically a attack and a defense. And uh, this score bot will tick in like each day and people overnight will be writing exploits or patching services and whatnot and uh, uh, running it tomorrow. Uh, sorry, the day after for it. Generally for these, you wanna find out where your flags are stored, what the programs do and try to just figure out what's going on and Earlier, I also mentioned that you might be analyzing your own traffic. So for this, um, you'll be uh, like, for these types of things, uh, since you, uh, you'll be patching and attacking, or yeah, sorry, uh, defending and attacking, uh, some other teams might be running exploits that you might not be aware of. And so if you monitor your traffic, you can kind of just you know steal their exploits and run them for yourself. You can see what people are doing to exploit your service and what's being stolen. And you can use that to um, just uh, leech off of it kind of, I guess. Since yeah, you're analyzing your traffic, it's uh, all kind of fair game. You can also uh, view your opponent's services and steal their flags as well, or bring down their service. Um, basically, uh, I probably could have explained this better, but you kind of have like a list of teams and a list of like, vulnerabilities and networks um, that will kind of um, just kind of be like a closed, like super intense uh, kind of a, like boxed in competition-ish. Um, if you want like a better understanding or like kind of what it's like, I suggest you watch this YouTube video that I linked. It's from Live Overflow and he demonstrated what, the def uh, what an attack and defense uh, CTF is like very, very well. So um, next we have Jeopardy. Jeopardy is what you'll be doing for your midterm and final. Um, sometimes some of these challenge, uh, these uh, competitions will be over a week or a weekend. Um, 
primarily like a weekend, but for this class, it will be a week long. You will be given a set of challenges with different categories for each thing. And you want to be solving these challenges to get flag and gain points. In normal competitions, usually uh, the first to solve the challenge uh, will get higher points and the higher points will basically uh, win the competition. Slide table. Um, so each category will also scale based uh, on the difficulty of the challenge itself. Um, you'll, I'll show you an example later, uh, in the next slide. Okay, cool. So this is uh, an example from the HXP uh, CTF. This was somewhere uh, last year, I think near the end. Um, you have like your many categories of CTFs, like you have your crypto, your miscellaneous pwning, reversing, web, and like an extra category. Um, as you can see, uh, you have like, uh, it's kind of like an actual like Jeopardy format, right? You have um, different categories and then each individual challenge will scale based on its difficulty. You can see that like for some of these, it will be either green or it'll be yellow or it'll be red. And you can also see that like the number of solves also show typically how hard or how many people can crack these challenges. So, <clears throat> so yeah. Um, also, one final note um, that I should probably mention that uh, the uh, scoring is public for this. Uh, you'll be able to see where you stand with your classmates for this CTF. Um, I also mentioned earlier that uh, the first to get the uh, challenge correct will net you the most amount of points. But for this CTF or yeah, for your midterm, it won't matter when you finish, just as long as you, you know, get the flag, you'll get the points. There's no penalty for finishing last, but please just don't start the day out. Uh, traditional CTFs will be different, as I mentioned earlier. Um, sometimes there is like a formula or like a time like slash race condition of which you have to like finish this challenge first to get the most amount of points. So we can see like from the HX, one of the HXP um, uh, challenges, there is this like big formula and depending on the number of solves that there is for it, you'll get like an X amount of uh, points that scales. But don't worry about this for this class. You, you will not have um, to be raced against like time or anything. So uh, with the Jeopardy CTF categories, there are usually um, these six, five-ish number of categories. Um, we have binary or reversing, uh, pwning, web, cryptography, uh, stego and miscellaneous. Um, so starting off with binary or reversing, um, this kind of just stands for binary or yeah, reverse engineering. For the most part, you'll be given a file or like a binary um, and you'll have to kind of find a flag out of it. Um, so usually people could just execute it, uh, play around with it, see what the program does, but you can only do so much without, um, you know, seeing what's under the hood, right? So you're gonna have to use special reverse engineering tools like a decompiler, and that way you can view the source code out of it. Um, uh, after you do see what's going on, you can kind of figure out what you need to do in order to get the flag. And then you just send it in to the program and it should output it to you. So for this kind of everything is fair game. So as long as you get the flag, um, there is more than one way to like, you know, solve a challenge and you won't be limited to like how you do it. Like there is like multiple um, ways that can get you like the same flag. Also, uh, don't worry about this for your midterm. This is one of the last concepts I believe for the class. So don't worry about this quite yet. Next we have pwning. So pwning generally can involve a lot of like, um, I guess disciplines of hacking. 
and the fundamentals of it, it'll take a lot of like, um, I guess, uh, experience in a, a various uh, fields of like uh, hacking itself and a lot of your knowledge and like understanding um, shell code assembly C and um, vulnerabilities and, you know, kind of intertwining them all together for this. This will kind of still be like your binary expectation-ish challenges. Um, for the most part, uh, an example of it could be like, you know, you given a vulnerable binary and you want to spawn a shell on a remote server. And within that shell, you can then spawn a flag. Um, so, you know, these, uh, these uh, uh, pun can also be like, you know, your vulnerability is like buffer overflows, stack overflows, ROPs, um, manipulating like the service, uh, bypassing the functionality that was intended. And, you know, you can use that to get the flag. And sometimes, um, the binary itself might need like a really, really big um, payload in order to get a flag. And you might even have to script it sometimes. And one of the more common libraries for this is Pwn Tools. Um, but don't worry about this quite yet because I don't think the challenges will be that hard for it, at least for this class. Well, I'm not entirely sure, but um, you know, just know that it's out there. And then, uh, don't also don't worry about this yet. This will also come later uh, with the class. Next, we have web. Um, these will be like your web exploitation challenges. So like you know your SQL injections, crisis scripting, that type of stuff. Um, sometimes it could be directed to a website, and you have to just find a vulnerability, uh, yeah, and exploit it in order to get you a flag. Um, you can also check out Port Swigger. Um, they're also a really good resource for knowing more about this. Um, sometimes you could, you know, be using Burp Suite or Chrome Dev Tools uh, to figure out what the flag is within like a web page or something. Don't worry about this for your midterm. We will be learning um, web stuff later as well. Okay, crypto. So this is probably one of the categories that you will be uh, challenged with. Um, so most of the time, the challenges will be revolving around ciphers, like your Caesar cipher, your Virginia cipher, your stream cipher, stuff like that. And also encryption algorithms like DES, EES, and RSA. Um, you may be decrypting you know, a cipher text to get a plain text, uh, which could also be a flag, right? Um, or, you know, you could be reversing or cracking a cryptography algorithm and doing that to also get you the flag. Next, we also have Stego and miscellaneous. So my bunch of pronunciation, but Stego stands for steganography. Yeah, um, this is kind of just more of like image analysis type of things. Uh, and miscellaneous is just also like the oddball category. Uh, sometimes it's not even like classified with human like real challenges. It's just toss up ish. Um, you'll see these more in like actual CTFs if you participate in them. Uh, but I don't think we'll be seeing these in the class. Um, yeah. So on the right side, we have um, another example from the HXP um, CTF. It's basically like super miscellaneous stuff that, um, you know, it doesn't really fit in other categories, but, you know, it's just, it's still there. Uh, don't worry about either of these for the midterm. Uh, these won't be, like, we won't really be going over um, these topics um, in the class for the most part. So key takeaways. Jeopardy CTFs contain many categories with many challenges, as you saw before. Uh, saw before. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> as the name suggests, it's kind of like an actual Jeopardy game, right? You have um, different categories, and then each individual challenge under the category will scale with points. Um, you can answer whatever uh, challenge you want in any order as well. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, hard, uh, if the challenge gets harder, or, sorry, yeah. Um, if you know that, like, you see like a higher point value out of it, just know that you know the challenge will be more difficult, and sometimes it also involves more complex uh, 
understanding of the category. And each category itself may involve using, you know, your different tools to do the job. And that way you can, you know, get your flag. So you want to have like, you know, a nice uh, arsenal or toolbox ready. And also another important note is that the name of the challenge and its description can give you hints about what you might have to do. So pictured here is another challenge from the HXB CTF. Um, this is called Excellent and it's a reversing challenge. Um, but in the description, it tells us that, you know, uh, we might be, you know, doing something with Microsoft Excel and you can, uh, you know, it's also nice for your know, business strategies, but what will be more appropriate, of course, you need the excellent Excel gold subscription as to be excellent as HXP. But um, for this challenge, uh, they'll uh, kind of just ask you to um, crack like a serial number uh, that will basically be like your Excel gold subscription. So you can have to reverse like an Excel sheet and see what the formula is and what the calculations are for it. Um, you know, it's just like a slight example. Uh, in the speaker notes for this slide, I will list the like write up and you can kind of see what it's like with it. So common tools. Um, first and foremost, the internet is your friend. Literally like everything you might think of is super well documented. Well, maybe not super, but it's all documented somewhere and you can just search whatever you want to find whatever you want to do. Um, we also have man pages, right? These will be like your manual pages. Um, if you're unsure about like a Linux command or something, you can um, search, uh, uh, search it up just using a manual page and you can uh, just, you know, like type man and find um, whatever command you might be unsure of, like you could, you know, man ls and figure out what ls does, uh, or if it has like, you know, some hidden other functionality that by, you might not know of. <clears throat> we also have debuggers, right? Um, here we have like the GNU debugger, and you can just, you know, set breakpoints and stop at certain points to understand what your program is doing. Um, we also have Wireshark. So this can be used to monitor your traffic and see, you know, what other teams might be exploiting your service with, or what flags are being stolen. Um, I don't think we'll be using Wireshark for CTFs, but um, we will be pretty sure we will go over Wireshark uh, sometime later. Um, we also have our reverse engineering tools, right? We have like Gija, Ida Pro, or Binary Ninja. Um, if you aren't provided with the source code, you know, just throw the binary in there and I'll decompile it and kind of just give you a good picture of what's going on. Um, we also have a burp suite for web exploitation. Um, you could proc to HTTPS traffic, edit and repeat requests, and decode your data and whatnot. But most importantly, did we also forget about the internet? Please Google like DuckDuckGo, start page, uh, Bing search, I don't know, just search like whatever you want uh, or you're unsure of. And there's a very good chance that you can uh, start doing um, backtracking or you know, Google searching uh, and figuring out what you need that you're missing from it or, under or just you know better understanding for something in order to do a challenge or in general. Okay, uh, moving on, we can start getting into before CTFs. So you have to, uh, so first off, you have to understand what the rules are. Um, you need to know like what you can and can't do for CTFs. Like you can't like DDoS a site, you can like sometimes brute force solutions um, for attack and defense. You can't take down the score bot or, um, you know, take down the entire like platform because that just net you a whole ban. And also not cheating. CTFs, you just don't cheat, it's bad. And it'll turn out really bad for you. Also, uh, you should be coming prepared, you know, having like your toolbox ready, right? With like your text editor, your web exploit um, resources, your reverse engineering stuff, um, 
you know, sometimes also having a virtual machine because you might have to work with like a Linux binary um, or sorry, like a binary that works on Linux. So you might have to, you know, uh, have like a virtual machine ready. Um, and also like your debuggers like GDB and whatnot, but also um, it may, it's definitely gonna be very important to disable auto reboot on Windows. Um, this has definitely happened to too many people uh, too many times, uh, especially like, you know, during super important uh, competitions and just outside of competitions too. Um, you definitely don't want uh, Windows to auto reboot on you during um, in your super critical work like especially during like an attack on the fence and you know, you're writing exploits or something that'd be just bad news bears okay so before your midterm ctf um you want to understand like what the environment is like and what rules uh, uh held there so um we will be going over it uh, as a demo um you want to understand what uh, the ctf is ran on and you know what the site is like what what's like the host like, um, can you also access the services and challenges? Um, but also you can't cheat, right? So where do you go if you need to ask for help? That's right, not your classmates. Um, knowing who to ask is also helpful. So we, uh, the T's and like the professors can only give you hints, but they can't obviously hand you the solution. You're gonna have to spend a lot of time um, on like the challenges, you know, doing a lot of Googling or something to figure out what you need to do. Also, you have to get your well being in check, right? You know, just do a quick sanity check. Um, you know, do, be sure that you're eating well, you're sleeping well. Um, maybe you may, you know, get your caffeinated drinks ready, uh, finish all your homework so you know you can set enough time for the CTF and. Also, don't forget to drink water and take many breaks because sometimes you'll be sitting there like stuck and have absolutely no idea where you're going. And um, you might just, you know, go take a break and then come back and pick it up and, you know, have a different perspective on the challenge and whatnot. Cool. So your midterm and final CTF. Um, at least for your midterm, it will be a week long. And it'll be from March 3rd, which is tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, to March 10th. The CTF itself will be released sometime tomorrow, so keep your eye out for that. Um, the CTF itself will test you on class material, and so it can be like, you know, from your lectures and assignments and everything in between. Also, do keep in mind that class will be ongoing as the CTF um, is occurring, so a ton class. The CTF itself will be individual. You just, you know, uh, set yourself some time to do the CTF. Don't cheat. We are all in the Discord, and we will see literally everything that you do. If you ask for like answers, that's not going to be pretty. Um, if you ask for help, uh, it also depend on what type of help you're getting too. Um, just please be uh, very careful and use your due diligence to know what you're doing and asking, especially in like a Discord or a Piazza post. If you have like a question, um, just, you know, make it like a private post to the instructors and, you know, the grad tiers or Adam and Tiffany will take a look and see if the question's good. You know, if they think it's good, they'll make it public. And so, yeah. Um, also, just please don't wait until the last minute to do this. There will be some, uh, quite a number of challenges and you the last thing you want to do is sit there and be like oh my god there is like 10 challenges and like I have to like crack RSA or something <sighs> like freaking out right just that's probably be like the worst take scenario that you'd ever want um but for this just please like leave yourself enough time to you know get stuck and struggle on this um this is like a learning experience for you because like you know uh challenges will be really hard and sometimes you just or be dumbfounded and have absolutely no idea what to do um, at least for uh fish's class last semester um we spent like a lot of time on uh binary analysis like homework levels and uh, just kind of like ctf challenges and you will be stuck there for 
a very, very long time <laughs> or really quickly, uh, depending on it and see like what you have to do. And um, you might not even know what to do. So you just, you know, have to sit there, you know, read through your man pages, read through uh, Google, uh, looking through websites and whatnot. It's, it'll be a lot. And um, oop. Uh, just please just don't wait for the last minute. Um, also, don't remember, uh, also remember to stay hydrated and take breaks and importantly, don't give up. So yeah, uh, also a famous quote, learning starts where prior knowledge ends from a wise man. Learning always wins, uh, even when winners don't learn. It's for also from the same wise man. Um, so just even though you think that um, like other people might be, you know, faster or better. Um, you'll always be learning, and learning is key. Um, for the midterm itself, you'll know more about like what you will want with your grade. Uh, on the website itself, there's like a grade tab, and um, that will be like up and ready sometime, you know, tomorrow. And you can see like when you want to stop, or like you'll know like if you have like the like an A or something from the CTF itself. Also, your username is public as well as your progress. You can see like in the scoreboard tab on the website, we'll demo this later. Um, and you can you know choose to be public or anonymous. That's entirely up to you. You can also just you know start your hacker journey by picking your own hacker handle and inheriting your uh, brand new identity. Also, for this CTF, what's unique about it is that you can do this entirely from your browser. You don't even need to, like, you know, have uh, a terminal up or anything. And yeah, we'll also show the, um, well, demo the CTF thing. Uh, sorry, the CTF site uh, after this presentation. Um, for resources, you can also look at CTF time. Uh, CTF time is basically um, where a lot of the CTFs are held like for each month or basically kind of like your all things CTF site. Um, the CTF time itself has like a CTF uh, wiki. You can check that out. Um, Pico CTF is great uh, since it's kind of more geared towards uh, middle high schoolers uh, as like, you know, kind of more like an intro to CTF. Um, even though it's like targeted for that group, don't like, don't like let that dissuade you from, you know, just checking it out because it's really helpful. I've done that, like, you know, uh, a lot of like the Pico CTF stuff myself and I learned a lot from it. Um, we also have Over the Wire uh, and we also have like, you know, the war games from it. Um, you can also check that out. They're also a super great resource. And from WeChow, right? We did the bandit levels at the very beginning of this semester and, um, those, you know, just like generally help like you know, build upon your Linux knowledge and can also, uh, you know, learn more things from it. Um, another common like resource that people might suggest is the art of exploitation. This is kind of like the um, no all be all like, you know, hacker handbook, like uh, a big portion of the community does like pride this re uh, book as like, you know, like your holy grail as of like how to hack. Um, a lot of your fundamentals could come from there. Uh, it's just a really, really nice resource. YouTube. YouTube has a lot of videos. People make YouTube uh, CTF walkthroughs. People talk about challenges, vulnerabilities, and everything else in between. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff on YouTube that are available you know, to the public. We also have Hack the Box. Hack the Box is um, also really nice for uh, challenges. You guys can also check that out. And for more resources, we have, uh, you know, some more local resources. Uh, we have our clubs at ASU, right? Um, Pound Devils and Devils Hack. Pound Devils is kind of like our ASU's very own hacking team or CTF team. And um, if you guys, you know, check out the link, uh, you guys can join the Discord and, you know, participate with them and learn more about CTFs that way. Or if you really, really like CTFs, you can keep, com and you want to keep, com uh, competing, you know, you can join them. Uh, all the CTFs will be held on CTF time. Uh, it's kind of like, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, it's like the whole like CTF schedule, all things CTF that happen like, you know, year round will all be there. And we also have DoubleSec. DoubleSec is another club at ASU 
that you know uh, focuses on like uh, vulnerability, uh, sorry, um, security expectation, kind of more like hands-on, like practical um, hacking, like web exploits, uh, you know, just like uh, more like practical application uh, for like security and stuff. We also have our archives, right? So for challenges that you might be stuck on or you might have attempted and you don't know what's going on, you can read uh, the write-ups that people will put up after the challenge. Um, and you can, uh, you know, it will be on a lot of sites, especially like on CTF time, there will be a lot of like, um, after the challenge, uh, there's like a write-ups tab in within like the challenge that was like posted and um, a lot of teams can, you know, contribute to that. And usually they help, um, uh, they just help because like they write down uh, their step-by-step -step process of what's going on or like what their thinking is and what they did themselves to do the challenge. But also remember that there's like no one way to do the challenge and um, you can, uh, uh, you can uh, be creative with kind of your solution uh, to get the flag. And now I um, think the CTF intro uh, should be enough. I think you guys are ready to be Hacker Man. And here's a picture of Fish, uh, the man, the myth, the legend as Hacker Man. So if you guys have any questions, please do ask in chat. I can entertain questions for a little bit before we start doing a demo. Um, when we register, should we use our real names? Um, you don't have to. You can if you want, but um, just everyone will see it, basically. Uh, I have so a if question. If you want to be anonymous, you can be anonymous. But uh, it'd probably be wise to register with an ASU email. When is the website uh, up? The practice CTF site is up already. 500 Dino Roberts. Oh my God. Wait, I have a question. Um, and I'll go for like another minute. Any other questions about like, you know, CTFs in general? Uh, I have a question about the midterm. Um, so I know Matthew just uh, clarified it. Uh, wait, could you hear me, sir? Oh yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. Um, so um, I know Matthew clarified me uh, over the chat, but I just want to like another clarification. So like once we start our midterm in the website, we do it in one sitting, like we can't do like a certain amount of challenges and then do another set of challenges the next day. Like yeah. it has to be. Like um, it's kind of like a come as a go, come as uh, like, yeah, it's a kind of like a come as a go thing. Um, you don't have to finish all of them in one sitting per se. You can obviously like, you know, split the challenges up, you know, uh, do like some of them one day, save the rest for later, right? Um, yeah, you just don't, no, uh, you don't have to like bore yourself and just sit through and just uh, force yourself to just, uh, do the entire thing. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, I think the phrase is coming, uh, come and go as you please. Um, Uh, yeah, there is no time limit, just as long as, you know, finish all of them or finish as much as you want before your midterm ends. Where's the site? Uh, oh, how many are there? Okay, we don't know how many there are, but the details for the midterm, like more logistics will be released uh, tomorrow. Do we need to do all of them? Uh, you'll know when you'll get like 100, uh, you know, uh, the grades tab will tell you. How is this graded? It's based on um, how many challenges you solve, I'm pretty sure. And, you know, like after an, enough of them has summed up, you can tell like what your grade is, unless I'm mistaken. You'll like, uh, we kind of like know as much as you guys do for like the actual logistics of the CTF itself. Um, we don't know if you can go over a hundred, but yeah, like you, there, there might be a chance that you guys will you know, possibly get extra credit from it. Uh, we don't know. We kind of just know as much as you guys do. Um, for the site, we will be going over that next. OK, 
Okay, uh, how many challenges? We don't know how many challenges there are. Just assume that you'll be like um, assessed through um, what you've guys done throughout the semester. Do you have any like rough estimate on how long it'll take? Like just the average? Um, hmm. Honestly, like, I can't say. Like 50 or like five, like, I don't know. Um, I don't want to like put numbers, but like, I, I, I just, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, just probably, you know, set yourself like at least like a day or two or maybe three. Uh, just like set yourself like a decent amount of time. Um, when the challenges are released, you don't have to solve them all at once at first. Uh, I guess like a good strategy would uh, uh, would be like, you know, checking out the challenge, um, playing around with it, and then like, you know, kind of gauging your difficulty based on that. Um, you know, you could like also write notes about like how much time you think you probably need or when you want to solve it, you know, save it for another day. Um, yeah. Uh, how do you register? When's the date for the exam? It's from March 3rd to March 10th. Um, so yeah, uh, does anyone else have any other questions or, or if I can start segueing into the demo? Um, okay, I guess I'll take the last question. Are the challenges um, gonna be similar to the Bandit challenges? Maybe, uh, we don't know. Um, it could literally be like, you know, Bandit, it could be like crypto, it could be um, literally anything. Uh, within reason. Where's the link posted? Okay, I think we can start going into the demo itself. Yeah, if anyone else has any questions. Yeah, okay. Um, so it's CTF time. Um, the professors have created a CTF platform for you guys to you know, go and test uh, the site itself. Uh, we want you to get you guys familiar with what the site is like and what uh, you'll be doing your entire CTF on. So if you guys uh, could head on over to, excuse me, ctf.csc365.io, uh, register for an account. And then after that, uh, I will be going over like the rest of the stuff and how to access it. Um, okay. So yeah, basically we have like two challenges that are listed for us called hello flag and create file. I will also demo those after um, in a little bit. Okay. So on the site itself, you can uh, register, uh, you can, you know, access the CTF through um, SSH, or you can just do it all on the browser and uh, with the built-in browser, I mean, sorry, with a built-in terminal tab. Uh, oh yeah, so some of the main takeaways, uh, we don't know all the details yet, but you know, pick your hacker handle. Uh, it can be whatever you want and within reason, or it could be your name, it's up to you. Just know that, you know, uh, everything will be public uh, and you can see what your cosmic score, you can see what you score and yeah. Um, we don't know for sure yet, but do register with an AC email for now. Um, yeah, you get an API key how to generate SSH. Okay, so basically, um, there are two ways to access the challenges, right? Uh, you can either do like an SS, uh, do that via SSH, or you can do the web-based terminal. So for SSH, you could either you know do uh, in the terminal, you can like generate SSH key via like SSH key gen, or you can uh, use PuTTY. Um, if you want like more steps for PuTTY itself, you can Google it. <laughs> Um, so after, you know, generating SSH key, take the public key and then like, you know, copy it and then paste it into your, uh, SSH key settings on the page itself, uh, yeah, onto your account. And then once that's updated, you can start, you know, SSHing in, into the, uh, CTF. So like, uh, I guess, um, an example, oh, okay. It's a typo, but, uh, don't do this do this, go to your settings and you should be able to see an SSH key 
tab. Um, oops, clear all drawings, yeah. And then after you do, uh, you know, go to your SSH key uh, tab on the menu and then paste in your SSH key there and then hit update and you should be good to go there. Okay, um, so now uh, I can uh, go over like uh, how to go over the web-based terminal. So uh, after um, I show you guys how to like, you know, access the challenges, you got, uh, once you like um, hit play or like run the challenge itself, you guys can go through the terminal tab and it'll spawn in like an entire Docker container uh, with the challenge itself for you. Uh, so for this, like, you know, click on your challenge, hit play, wait for it to, you know, be generated, go to your terminal tab, and everything should be available for you. So once you do have, like, you know, kind of like your setup ready, or I guess, like, if you want to SSH in uh, that way, um, or, you know, just uh, start the challenge, um, there is a challenges tab on the site. And once you see, like, your know, challenges, go click on the um, thing. Uh, yeah, click on the challenge itself, and then click on run challenge and you want to wait for this blue box down here uh, that says like, you know, you can connect with this uh, SSH key, uh, SSH and the user and host um, to spawn in. And so here you can either just SSH into this address um, with uh, this exact command SSH CTF at ctf.cic365.io or, you know, after it's spawned in, just go to the terminal tab and it should be there for you. Um, after that, you know, just do the challenge and get the flag. Cool. So when you do get both the flags, say I'm in. And then once I see enough or, you know, once I see some uh, uh, struggle or demonstration, uh, I'll demo over the challenges myself as well. So yeah, um, we want to, <laughs> Um, here's our references in inspiration. Um, we want to shout out Undertale and Fish and these links as well for, you know, helping us uh, just give us like a, some baseline for CTF stuff. Okay. Um, yes, the slides will be posted. Uh, you can do whatever name you want. Just, you know, just be professional. Um, you know, also just pick your hacker home to be whatever you want. Um, how should we review and prepare? Um, just don't freak out. <laughs> um, take it step by step. Um, you know, just come as you are type of thing and, you know, slowly figure out the challenges. If you can't run the challenge, um, it should spawn in like a box for you. So, yeah. Um, so I guess I can start like demoing it. I want to click play. It comes with a blank YOLO box. What are we SSHing into? Um, if the challenge spawns, you can see uh, the uh, SSH, SSH, uh, CTF, uh, CC365.io. Uh, maybe we have to use JavaScript. I'm not sure. Permission to not public key. Um, make sure that you know, you're know you submitting your uh, public key into the machine. Um, if you get a blank YOLO box, I'm not sure. Uh, the Docker container might have been broken or yeah there's some docker issues so just be a little patient uh refresh your page maybe yeah register right now um this will be your platform for the midterm yeah okay so i guess i can like screen share cool okay you guys can see that yep okay um, so, you know, here we are on the city of the 6365 website itself. Um, you know, this is your entire midterm platform. You have, you know, your terminal, your grades. This is broken, not fixed up, uh, not set up yet. We have, you know, all of our users, um, our scoreboard. This is what I was talking about earlier. Um, depending on how fast you solve, you can like see like what the top 10 is or how many people, you know, finish the challenge first. You can see your entire classroom's worth of, um, uh, hackers and their progress. And also we have our challenges tab here. Okay, so um, 
what you do, you know, just click on a challenge, hit run challenge, and it should spawn in the blue box for you. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so um, either SSH in or, you know, just use the terminal tab. So once you do, you know, have that blue box, you can head over to the terminal and boom, voila, you have an entire uh, Docker like box just ready for you. Um, yeah, and, you know, just try out the challenge. We see like, you know, and we have the list practice city of hello flag. Uh, and yeah, so this is the way to access it via terminal. Um, I'll go over how to do it via SSH. Okay, cool, okay. Um, so you guys can see this, right? Yeah, okay, so um, in terminal, you know, SSH, uh, run SSH key gen, uh, get a key gen uh, set up and if you want to like specify a location, uh, just know that like whatever file you create here uh, will be in like the current directory that you're in. Um, but for the purpose and intents of this presentation, I'll just uh, put it in the IDRSA. Uh, I'm not gonna have a passphrase. Cool, okay. I have an identification saved in the IDRSA and I also have my public key. So we want the public key here. This is the most important thing for this. Um, so, you know, you can either like, you know, go to your file manager and open it up yourself or, you know, just cat, no, uh, whatever content is in there, uh, copy paste it, um, and then go to your settings, your SSH key, and then paste it in here. And once you see the success, your public key has been updated, then you know that it's good to go. So um, I'm gonna once again run the challenge um, just for demo purposes. Um, the challenge is already active, but yeah. So I see that you can connect with sshctf.csc365.io. Uh, so heading back onto our terminal, um, I'll just SSH in, uh, authenticity of the host can be established. You know, sure continue connecting, yes. And adding that to the list and voila, now you have access to um, the challenge. Um, your box. Yeah, so if you're keep uh, if you're still getting the yellow box error, just you know, refresh and be a little patient with the site um, because we're getting like bombarded with everyone else like registering and running all at once. When is this due? Um, you can like hopefully register by like tomorrow or before, like get familiar with the site before tomorrow. It'll be like advantageous for you to understand like how your midterm works. Yes, you get unlimited attempts. Um, you will not be docked for the number of times you try to submit. Um, also, uh, yes, the practice is optional. Also do note that, you know, um, since this is like a site, um, when you hit run, you get a unique Docker container that spawns for just you. So each person here will have different flags for each challenge. This is very important because if you cheat, we will know that you're cheating. <laughs> Um, if you submit a flag that was meant for someone else, like we'll uh, like the, the site will keep logs and Adam and Tiffany will know and it's not going to be a good time for you. So please just don't cheat, don't copy flags because it won't work. Uh, we would not lose point, uh, you won't lose points for fail solves. I probably should have mentioned this, this in the slides. Uh, which part of SSH key did I copy? Okay, so when I did the SSH key gen, I copied the public key. Um, yeah, take the public key and then you know copy it to your clipboard and then paste it into the site itself. Uh, what do we do? What we do? What do like in Binance? Like for file, what do we do here? Um, okay. Uh, invalid format. Um, maybe try regenerating your SSH key gen. Um, it should just be like starting with SSH and then whatever uh, encryption thing you did was uh, your thing and then end with like your user and host. We make the key independent on the site, yes. I think. I have a question uh, yeah, about sure. the keys. So like, um, is this one time upload for the key or can we like, if there's something wrong with that key, we can upload another key or? Yeah, you can like upload another key, I guess. Um, you know, if you're like from like going from like another machine or like another terminal, uh, you can do another key gen and then upload it into the site. Okay, thank you.
Yep. Okay, uh, let me just look at the challenge and see how many solves there are. On 36, 118. Uh, um, cool. Uh, let's see, it's 11.30. I'm not sure when this class ends. 11.45, okay, perfect. Um, I guess I can start demoing the challenges if everyone has at least attempted them. Yeah, I was gonna say at least just demo hello flag so that they know what they're doing. Yeah, okay. Um, so hopefully everybody has their um, account set up ready. You know, remember hacker handle, um, if you want to be anonymous, be anonymous. If you want to be you know, showing your name, show your name. Um, and ASU email for now. And so, yeah. Um, support 22 um, party. Yeah. Uh, check out what Matt said. Um, permission denied. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, okay. So, I guess we'll start demoing the challenge itself. Okay. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run the challenge. Uh, oh. Yellow box, what do you know? <laughs> um, let's see if the Docker thing will work. Um, I'm pretty sure you know the whole site's being overloaded because everyone else is like doing the challenge at once. Um, if you guys are doing with Putty, um, you know, try doing like the web terminal for now. Um, if you want to know more, there should be like a how to. Uh, yeah, how to SSH key gen via putty. And I, uh, yeah, just follow the instructions for this site. I'm on like a Linux machine, so I apologize for not being able to help you guys. Yeah, you can also use WSL. Uh, if you have a yellow box, just re try to refresh the page or something and Pray for the best, honestly, or yeah, you know, just be patient. So yeah, uh, once the challenge is run, you know, I'll go into the web terminal. Um, so I see that there's a binary or there's a thing that just stands out called practice CTF underscore hello flag. Uh, so if we, you know, check out uh, what the file is itself, it's a uh, ELF, you know, diamond linked, and it's based on Linux x86-64, um, and it's for GNU Linux 3.2.0. Cool. So um, let's just you know execute the binary and see what this tells us. Hi there. In this challenge, we will give you the flag directly. The flag is in the path slash flag I seen right here, and we will just read it to you. Here's your flag, phone college, and the flag format, or just a unique flag. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I can't copy paste on the Firefox with my keyboard because uh, that. Oh, yeah. So I'm just going to do it the boomer way, copy, paste it, and then, you know, go into your challenges, copy the flag, um, go into the flag itself, submit, and it should tell you correct. If it's incorrect, it'll say incorrect. So like if I were to like submit that, it should say incorrect, yeah. Uh, you won't be docked for number of points, but um, it'll show you like the number of times that you've attempted this. So if you have a fail, it'll show that, but it won't affect your grade. This will not affect your grade. Just completing the solve will um, uh, will be enough. Okay. Um, what did he cut? The key. Okay. Okay. Um, so I, you know, I got the key from uh, the directory that it told me it was in. Um, if you're in another. Uh, environment uh just google how to do it um yeah i just oh not yeah not the private key the public key yeah i just cat the public key and uh copy pasted it you can also you know view it in vim or nano or whatever you want uh you don't need a key you can do it all in the browser um which is the cool part but if you want to like you know do it from ssh you can Oh, yes, good point. Make sure you're also authenticating the key. Um, when you do, uh, you know, make sure that, you know, authenticate with your private key that's saved here. So, uh, one sec, I'm going to pause here real quick.
Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So, um, oh, whoops. Okay. So from earlier with the SSH key gen, I probably shouldn't have flipped the history, uh, clear terminal. terminal. So, um, you know, uh, you can uh, SSH in a CSC three sixty CTF uh, CSC three sixty five IO, and then um, authenticate with a private key with dash I, and then the directory that you store the private key in. Um, so earlier we saw like you know your key is stored here, and then your public key. Um, so I'm just gonna paste my private uh, my yeah my private key here as uh, where the you know, it's stored, and then I can just SSH in. I'm gonna give it a little bit and voila, it should just give it to you. And here I can also do practice CTF and get the flag this way. So once you upload your SSH key, you can start doing the challenges. Um, you know, yeah, click on your challenge tab, you know, uh, click on the challenge itself and then run it. Um, Guess now I'll go over create file. Um, I'll wait for this to run. Oh, perfect, cool. Um, so I'll head on over to my terminal. It's gonna spawn me a new Docker. Um, LS. So you see uh, here we have like a flag directory and we have a binary practice CTF create file. So let's execute practice CTF create file. Um, it says here, this challenge will check if you create a file with correct content. You need to create a file at temp uh, and this random string. Um, the file should contain the string of this without quote. Now we got to check a create file. It'll do the check for us and tells us that you know we can't open the file, uh, the file because, well, it doesn't exist. So if we cd into temp, um, we have rewrite uh, permissions for this. So here we can you know create a file. You can do this however you want. Like you can touch um, the file and then like you know pipe something in, or you can just uh, vim and do it. Uh, so we're going to touch and we're going to create a uh, GYS uh, HM. You can either CD into it or you can just do it uh, outside. Um, you know, just there's multiple ways to just do it, whatever's like more comfortable for you. And then I'm going to echo the string here. Take the string. Oop, can copy paste. Uh, copy and then paste it in. Copy, paste, there we go. And then I'm gonna send the input into J -Y J -S -Y -H -M, what the file is. And then if we, you know, wanna see uh, what's inside, you know, cat, and then you can see that it contains the string this time. So, you know, go back to your uh, root directory. Yeah, go back to root and then you know, ex uh, execute the binary, and this time it gives us the flag here. Um, you know, yeah, just copy paste that, uh, go to create file, paste it, and submit, and there we go. Um, obviously, there's multiple ways to do it. Like, you can just uh, touch uh, temp. Yeah, I don't know what the thing is called again. Yeah, you can do like touch temp. JYSHM, and then uh, input like the string in there. So you can like, JYSHM, you know, you can use Vim, you can like literally do whatever you want. Um, just uh, somehow get the string in there. Yeah, so we have Vim here. Oops. And then we can just paste the string. Oops. Um, and then save it and then practice and run it again, yeah, etc. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, do we need to press the play button each time or once we solve a level SSG and automatic plus the next level? Um, it won't, uh, you're gonna have to do it each time at least for the challenge that you wanna work on. So yeah, it won't like automatically move you up. You just have to like do it yourself because um, it's spawning like a Docker container for it. Uh, yeah, we're nearing like the end of class time. Uh, sorry I like let on for so long. 
but yeah, hopefully this guy, uh, this should give you like um, a good insight as to what the CTF is like and well, what to it kind of expect for the format at least. Do all the challenges open tomorrow? Sorry, do all the challenges open tomorrow? Yes, it should be sometime uh, tomorrow uh, once uh, Adam and Tiffany post it. Do you have to submit once we're done with all the challenges, do once we finish with the auto grade? Um, you can submit it as you go. Um, you know, just take the thing and then like paste it into the challenge itself. Um, okay, if I were to like, okay. You know, if I were to like CD and I'm back in like my home directory, I'm gonna CD uh, back twice and then I'm back into root. Yeah, CD back into root. Cool, okay. Um, so yeah, I guess this kind of concludes the um, CT off intro. Um, I'll entertain a few more questions before I stop the session. Can I resolve post name? Um, Luke, be sure you know, uh, to SSJ to select the right user, I think. Um, but yeah, um, if you guys don't have any other questions, uh, thank you for coming out to today's session. Um, hopefully, you know, this was entertaining or somewhat helpful to you guys. Um, uh, me and uh, Lonnie put a lot of work into the slides. Uh, and so it's like a short notice. So hopefully you guys will have um, learned something useful from this. Um, the slides will be posted and the recording will also be posted when it's available. So yeah. Um, yeah, uh, if you're using a web browser, you don't have to paste the key. So yeah, thank you guys for coming out and uh, hopefully this helped 